I'm from Barking in, in Essex, in it's kind of East London, and uh, I, I sort of grew up there and was, was educated to uh, work at the Ford Motor Company, but I decided against that and um, uh, ended up doing a number of odd jobs. I worked in a record shop, I drove a tank for a while in the Irish Usars, I did all sorts of strange things, and then I ended up doing this job, which is uh, what I always wanted to do. Tell us a bit about the influences as a child, though. Were you always interested in music and politics? No, no, not all interested in politics at all in my house growing up. Music a lot, yeah. I mean, I, I sort of listened avidly to the radio and, and was very much into Tamla Motown and, and that kind of stuff when I was growing up. The politics, I suppose, came really when I started writing songs and playing solo was, was in the uh, early 80s, which was a very political time in this country. I'm sure your listeners remember. Mm. And I guess it, that's what made me write politically. I mean, people ask me why I don't write such ideologically political songs these days. And I say, well, we don't really live in an ideological political atmosphere. You know, we live in a... In a our politics is now is a lot more about... Um, style over substance it's much harder to write about that sort of thing there's a progression though though isn't there you know from liking music to picking up an instrument and performing and then writing i'm one of those kids who wrote poems at school and never stopped Mm -hmm. and everyone does a bit of that at school i think at the behest of the english teacher but i just got into it and um the one o level i got was english language which is kind of the poet's o level uh gcse so i I figured that was my all the qualifications i needed and, and flunked the rest of my exams Not on purpose, I may add, to your younger listeners out there, Mm -hmm. thinking that's the way to get ahead, much to the disappointment of my parents. But um, I I just, you know, learned to play the guitar because I was writing these poems and I thought it'd be good if I could play them. I might, I don't know, what did I want to do? I suppose meet people of the opposite sex and impress them. I guess that's the reason for... Did it work? Eventually, yeah, when I was about 25, (laughs) there was a long period in between where I was just uh, some saddle with a guitar. Uh, it took you that long to learn a few more chords, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what it was, yeah, once I got G, E, minor, C and D. <laughs> and what about the first performances? Were they sort of uh, local pubs or busking or what? Yeah, local pubs, actually. Um, so you you might know, um, from your neck of the woods, you might be aware of where Earthlingborough is. It's mm-hmm. over towards um, Rushton yeah. in Northamptonshire. Strangely enough, there, I think, we made our debut. We, we um, Me and my band, we were a punk band, and we we knew a guy who had a studio at Aundel, and we we used to go and hang out with him, and he had a band, and he offered us a gig. So we, as a punk band, we opened for his band, whose audience was almost exclusively bikers. So it was a bit of a shock for them to see these Herberts. But they were, I think they were very, they were calm bikers, so it wasn't too bad. So we, and we did a lot of gigs um, around, um, around that area. We lived in Aundel for a couple of years, and we were, we were the token punks. Uh-huh. While everyone else was still wearing Lionel Blairs, we were wearing skinny tight trousers and um, <laughs> and consequently got chased around by people. But it, it was kind of an education. Now, in a sense, you've always been uh, the, the sort of person who questions authority. And... You've been speaking to my mum, haven't you? Well, yeah. Yeah, but, she would um, have told you that, yeah. But were you a, a really a committed punk? I mean, you're not an anarchist by any stretch of the imagination. No, no, I was more of a stylistic punk, I think, than a committed punk. There was something, I think there was something great in... Um, in, in punk music, in the attitude of punk, in the do-it-yourself attitude. I mean, the most important thing to me about The Clash was that they were 19 years old. They were the same age as me. Mm. And, and I, I couldn't work out how I would ever be like the Rolling Stones. I couldn't I, how I was going to get from my parents' back room to playing at Earl's Court. But seeing the, 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 the Clash and bands like The Jam in the London pubs, I realised that the way you do it was to do it, to be in a band. You know, you played. If someone didn't come and discover you, you just got out there and wrote songs and did gigs. And that's kind of what we did for a few years, kicked around. Um, East Northamptonshire until it kind of all fizzled out in 1980 and I ended up back at my mum's. And what about the first recordings? Because uh, certainly the the first that were available and on sale, you promoted it yourself, didn't you? That's right, we did, yeah. At the time, I, I, I think we pressed 5,000 copies of the first Billy Bragg album and the record company just gave me 25 copies and said, see if you can get some reviews and some radio. So I trudged around the New Music Express and those kind of newspapers trying to impress people with my fabulous songs and um, eventually it was more through doing gigs really I think people coming to see me play live you have to remember I was playing solo electric guitar at a time when everyone else was doing um, synthesizers and funny air cuts in 1982-83 you know my main competition was Howard Jones so it wasn't really it wasn't as if I was you know (laughs) I I was up against much 